Chapter 22, The Best Story Ever. Do you think we should go in the forest and check on Miss Mulberry and Victoria? Ben asked. I guess so, Pearl said. They hurried across the road and were just about to head up the forest path when a horn honked and a blue and white patrol car pulled up alongside. The darkened window rolled down and Officer Millie stuck her head. Hiya, Pearl. Hiya, Ben. What are you two up to? (laughs) Nothing, Pearl said. Nothing, Ben said. Ben's reflection stared back at him in Officer Millie's sunglasses. He looked the exact same he'd looked when he'd just gotten up that morning. But he just had the most amazing adventure of his life. Shouldn't I look different, he wondered. Officer Millie stared over the rims of her glasses. It's been a strange morning. A stray dog got loose in the senior center and made a real big mess. But no one got hurt. You two wouldn't know anything about that, would you? No, Pearl and Ben said. What about the net that was left in the forest? Do you know anything about that? No, Pearl and Ben said. Well, Mrs. Mulberry and Victoria... And Victoria Mulberry got tangled in the net, but they're okay. No harm done. Officer Millie pointed to the rolled up paper in Pearl's hand. What you got there? We got jobs at the worm hospital, Pearl said. We're going to work Monday, Wednesday, and Friday all summer. What do you do at the worm hospital? Officer Millie asked. Feed the worms, Ben said. Take them for walks, Pearl said. And give them baths, Ben added. Stuff like that. All summer, huh? Officer Millie chuckled. Well, it sounds like... It will keep you two out of trouble. Come on, I'll give you both a ride home. Ben and Pearl climbed in the back seat as they rode to Pine Street. Ben might have been thrilled about riding in the back of a police car, but his brain was flooded with images. The dragon swooping between the clouds, the hatchling dangling from Barnaby's mouth, the Sasquatch eating butterscotch pudding, and of course, the tail poking out from Mr. Tabby's vest. All those things were way better than any sort Ben had ever told. How come you two are so quiet? Officer Millie asked. Glancing at them in the rearview mirror, you got some secrets? Ben smiled at Pearl. Pearl smiled back. Grandpa Abe was still at the senior center when Ben arrived back at his house. Barnaby was lying in a weight beneath a bird feeder, swatting at chickadees. Once inside, Ben opened his sock drawer and tucked the Sasquatch catching certificate way in the back. Monday couldn't arrive fast enough. What would happen at Dr. Wu's secret hospital? Perhaps he'd learn why the doctor had been covered in fairy dust and who or what eats kiwi-flavored jelly beans. Perhaps he'd learn where to find the imaginary world. Or maybe he should actually go out there. He scooped Snooze out of the cage and cradled him in his hands. I think it's going to be a great summer, he told the hamster. Snooze stared at Ben with his beady black eyes and then curled up into a ball and fell asleep. Ben tucked Snooze back into his nest and closed the cage. Life is simple in a plastic rectangle where nothing changes. But some, sometimes change is just what life needs. Sometimes change is a very good thing. Ben smiled and headed into the kitchen to do the dishes.